What's up guys, welcome back to another Hazel devlog. So last week we talked about prefabs and now we can shoot them. So this was something that I was working on during the last week, basically being able to instantiate prefabs from our C Sharp scripts. You can see I've put together a little bit of a scene here where we can just click and shoot, well, really any prefab. At the moment it's this like glowing green, like uranium looking like cube. Uh, we can even kind of rocket jump as you saw there by just aiming it below us and then firing. Now I know it might seem overly bright and emissive, but that's because everyone knows that once you have bloom and emission inside a game engine, you have to actually use it for pretty much everything. So that's what you're seeing here. I kind of like this idea of starting off a devlog with the actual demo. So that way it's really clear to see what I guess is new and what we're talking about. So let's just spend the rest of this video diving in and taking a look at this in a little bit more detail. As always, if you're supporting Hazel on Patreon, you can jump into the scene yourself and try it out. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed that little prefab demo. Let's dive in and take a look at how the scene was structured. So last devlog, I explained what prefabs were. I'll have that linked up there, by the way. So I'm not going to really go over that. I just wanted to show you guys the new features that I've added since last week. Basically, I put together this little scene that is uh, pretty standard. Uh, it's actually kind of based off of that audio demo. That's why there are random things <laughs> fly flying around there. That's all kind of scripted inside C Sharp. But basically what we've got inside here is a prefab that I think is called projectile. And if we take a look at the projectile prefab, here it is up here. So it's just an entity that's made up of um, a bunch of different components. You can see here that it shows up as like blue, which indicates that it's a prefab. We can add prefabs normally to scenes as you would expect. But the cool new thing that I've kind of added is the ability to instantiate it from C Sharp scripts, which is what you saw in that demo. So over here we have uh, our kind of player entity that has a C Sharp script attached as well. And you can see that script over here. So this um, has a projectile prefab field, which is this particular projectile. And if we take a look at uh, how the C Sharp script is actually written over here, we have, it's very messy, but we have a, um, where is this? We have a prefab, a public prefab called projectile prefab. That's what you saw inside the editor. And then we have, this was just me testing stuff. Um, but we have this uh, update shooting function, which basically has a bit of a cooldown there and it spawns a projectile if we're ready to shoot. And then what that does is calls instantiate with that projectile prefab. Get, since it's a rigid body, we have to get the rigid body. It's a dynamic rigid body. Set the rigid body's translation to be like where we want it to basically spawn and then add a force to it. We also actually add a parent and this parent, I think at this point is this projectile holder entity. So if I run the um, if I run the scene here, you'll see that we have this projectile holder entity that actually holds all these. It's just a, I guess, a bit of a test and more so for like organization and stuff. But you can see the scene running through um, through Hazelnut as well. So that's how the script works. I guess pretty much how you would expect. Uh, and then this instantiate function is kind of doing um, most of the work. Now I want to quickly mention that like. C Sharp scripts and the way that we kind of handle these in Hazel are um, very much like, uh, I always compare it to puppet strings because all, all we're really doing, I mean, if you look at what a prefab is at the moment inside the script, it's just this. It is literally just a 64-bit asset ID. It's the ID of the prefab that we want to instantiate. And so when we have a function such as instantiate, if we take a look at what instantiate does, it basically tr it calls the native function, which tries to actually create it. Um, we'll we'll go into that in a minute. But ba but basically, uh, all we have to do is pass in we pass in the ID that of this current entity that is actually instantiating another entity, just in case we need it. I don't think we're using it at the moment. And then we actually pass in that prefab ID as well to the native C++ code. If that returns not zero, so that can happen if like the asset doesn't exist for whatever reason, we return null. If it does uh, return zero, otherwise we create a new entity out of it. And again, an entity is just an ID as well. Everything is just like a UUID, which is pretty cool. So that's what the instantiate function does. It calls instantiate native, which if we jump into the uh, C++ code, uh, instantiate native. Let's just go to that function directly. That's uh, it's not actually called instantiate native. I think it's just called instantiate. And it's inside 
in, oh, whoops, let's open file, instantiate, it's inside like script wrapper, this is it. So this is what it does, it gets the current scene context, it gets like the map of entities, it checks to see if the prefab ID is actually a valid asset handle, and then if it is, it just retrieves the asset and then it calls scene instantiate, which basically just adds it to like the, the scene as like a special prefab thing. Um, and then we get back the UUID of the entity that we've just created. So in terms of like how this is all put together, it's all very basic, very simple. That's the way I like it. Um, and then since everything is a UUID, when we get that back as an entity, we can do whatever we want to it, which, uh, you know, such as set that translation of like a particular component that we retrieve, add a force to it, to it to actually make it shoot, all of that kind of good stuff. So that's kind of a look at the code behind this demo. Now, in terms of the UI, um, the cool thing about prefabs is that it's really easy to make something new and then uh, kind of, I guess, replace the existing functionality with that new asset. So what I mean is if we were to like create like a sphere, for example, let's just say we wanted to make it shoot a sphere instead. So what I can do is uh, create this sphere. Maybe I'll make it a bit smaller over here. Um, let's go ahead and add our uh, like rigid body component to it. Uh, we'll make it dynamic. I might decrease the mass. Um, we'll add a sphere collider component to it, which is, oh, right. It already has one because I created a sphere. Um, let's add a physics material to it, such as like this projectile material, which is, uh, which we can add a little bit of bounciness to. So let's go ahead and drag that into here. And what am I, what else am I missing? Anything? I've decreased the mass. No, that looks pretty good to me. Oh yeah, well let's add some other stuff like a material and we'll also add a light to it. So I'll come over here. And by the way, you can create like sub entities, I guess, like as in I can, I can add children to this if I want, um, but I'm not going to, <laughs> but it works, trust me. So let's make the radius like a bit smaller. Maybe we'll make it red and actually let's make like a nice red material. Maybe I'll up the intensity as well. So if I go into like my materials, um, let's make this material called red sphere. Um, we'll drag that into here. We'll double click on it to edit it, which opens up the material editor, which I'll put over here. We'll make it red. We'll add some emission to it because everything has to be emissive, as you know. Um, I might decrease the intensity of skylight because I think it's getting a little bit bright in here. Um, okay, and now I've got this sphere. So how do I make a prefab out of it? Well, I can just drag it over here and call it like sphere. Can't even see what I'm typing. Sphere, right? And then uh, now that's a prefab. I can delete this. I can drag it in, and you can see it is in fact a prefab, and it's the, the same way as what we left it. But then if I go into player, I can just drag that sphere now into here to replace the projectile. So now if I hit play and shoot, you can see we're shooting these kind of red spheres. So it's pretty cool because it means that you can like just completely uh, kind of, you know, separate certain functionality and scripts and kind of certain assets, I guess, uh, from the actual code and from the actual C-sharp scripts, um, which is really cool. Because again, someone, you know, instead of a sphere, this could be like a rocket and some artist could be working on that rocket, perfecting it, making it perfect. And meanwhile, another programmer could be like doing the, or a programmer could be doing the actual like game functionality and could be using this placeholder sphere. But then when the rocket's made, you can just replace the rocket or re replace the sphere with that rocket and everything's ready to go. So um, yeah, I think prefabs are really cool. I like, obviously they're really cool and we love using them in whatever engine we're working in. But it's one of those things that I didn't really think about too much when I was designing Hazel and when I was creating like the kind of rest of the engine. But, you know, now that we have, um, now that we're actually beginning to make games with Hazel, having having that technology and having those kinds of kinds of things, that, that's why it's so important to make games with game engines, because there's so many features that might not even pop into your head that are so, so, so important. And if you're making a game, then you're kind of going through that entire list of, of features that you might want and actually adding stuff that makes your life way, way, way easier. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this little devlog. Don't forget to hit the like button. If you did, patreon.com slash the channel, best way to help support Hazel and get access to all of the source code and play around with it and learn from it. We have a fantastic learning community and I've got some pretty exciting uh, content on like the educational side of things coming as well. But let me know what you thought of this devlog. I showed a little bit more code than usual. I do have some deep dives planned uh, very soon. 
I'm working, currently working on the Bloom one. So how Bloom works in game engines and inside Hazel as well. And that's going to be like a, an actual deep dive. But if you, if you have any other topics that you want me to kind of do a deep dive video in, then please let me know in the comment section below. And I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.